Hey there! Thanks for watching with Wendy. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a denim button-up shirt, also known as a chambray. For this tutorial, you just need some light denim fabric as well as some fusible interfacing. That's the kind of interfacing that has a glue side so that when you iron it to stuff, it sticks. You also need five buttons to go in the front of the shirt as well as five decorative buttons if you want. There's one that goes up here, two that go on the chest pockets, and two that go on the cuffs. For more details on how much fabric and all that kind of stuff, make sure you check out the bottom bar for links. In terms of time, this could take you a long time. This is one of the harder tutorials and I only did it because everyone kept being like, do a collared shirt, but it's definitely not easy. So if this is your first time sewing, please don't try this one first. But if you're feeling adventurous and you have a day off, go for it because this took me a whole day, but it was fun. If you like this tutorial, please make sure you subscribe so you can see more. And if you want, you can also find me online under at with Wendy, like on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, that kind of stuff. The bracelet in this video is from Romwe. It goes on like this. Bam! <laughs> One thing I like about this shirt is that, like, I've made the sleeves shorter so you can actually show off all your arm candy stuff. If you want to check out Romwe, there's a link down there for you too. Check it out if you want, and if you don't want to check it out, then don't. That's all for today. I hope you guys have a really great day, and I will see you all next time. Bye! Lay down a loose fitting sweater and fold the denim fabric right sides together in half. You're going to cut out the shape that's on the screen here. There's a little bit of a flap going up on the left hand side and then following the shoulders, the neckline, the armhole and along the side and the bottom. Try to make the bottom a bit longer and a bit curved because that gives the shirt a nice shape. You're also going to cut out two pieces of interfacing that go down the very center of your body and climb up that tiny little strip on the left hand side. Cut out two symmetrical sleeve pieces by following the shape that you see here, going a little bit longer than your sweater's arm and then going all the way to the armpit and curving it up to the shoulder in that S shape. There's also the back piece, which is right now shown folded so that I could make it perfectly symmetrical, but it's basically the same as the front pieces, only that the neckline goes a little bit higher, about an inch. Feel free to make the back piece curve a little bit lower than the front piece because that makes it a nice asymmetrical look, and again, on the side with the armholes, just follow the exact same shape. The other piece we're missing is the cuffs. Make sure you cut out two rectangles that when folded in half are a little bit wider than your current sweater cuff. You also need two strips of fabric that are about one inch wide and these are called the plaquettes. They're part of forming the cuff. In order for our cuff to have a little structure, it's going to need some interfacing to go alongside it, so cut out two interfacing rectangles for those cuffs as well. For the collar, you need two denim pieces that kind of form this squared out dome shape as well as one piece of interfacing to give it some structure. And for the pockets, you need two big house-shaped pentagons and four little pentagons to make the flap for the pockets. Whew! So now you're done cutting out all of your pieces. First step is to fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric for all the pieces that are shown here. To get started on the pockets, fold and press the top edge on both of the pocket pieces so that the right side of the fabric is on the outside. Then go ahead and do the same for all the other sides of the pocket, folding in the corners first and then folding in the whole side. Pin the pockets to the right side of the two front pieces and sew them along the sides and the bottom. 
Sew the pocket flaps right sides together along the bottom and side edges so that you have two pieces instead of four. Flip those inside out like you can see on the top one and then sew it down along the top and along all the sides. Cut a little slit along the bottom of the pocket flap so that it's big enough to fit the button and then use a skinny zigzag stitch and just start at the top, go all the way down the right, turn it around and then go all the way back down. Pin those two pocket flaps to the front of the shirt and then sew them down along the bottom edge. Once that flap is sewn in place, then you bring the flap downwards, pin it in place, and then give it one more top stitch along that top edge so that it stays pressed downwards on your shirt. Pin and sew those two front pieces to the back piece of the shirt right sides together along the two shoulders and along the side, but stop about 3 inches from the bottom because that makes it look nice. Before we keep going, we'll prevent anything from fraying in that front edge by going down it with a zigzag stitch. We'll also take those top edges and press them down with an iron about a centimeter in. On the collar piece that has the interfacing, mark out two little triangles about seven inches away from each other and sew them down. These are just gonna help things stay in place on your collar. Cut inwards until you reach those triangles and then iron that little edge down as well. Then lay those two collar pieces on top of each other, right sides together. Sew those two pieces together along the side, the bottom, and the other side. Flip it inside out, push out really hard on those corners, and then sew all the way along the top, but make sure you don't sew shut that hole that we left between those two triangles. With the whole side facing up, pin that collar to the top of the shirt, right sides together, and then we're going to sew it together all along the top edge, again leaving that hole open. Now fold those two side flaps inwards so that the edge of the flap is touching the center of that little triangle and pin those down along the entire free edge. Sew that down as well all the way across. Flip those collar pieces and push on those corners to make sure that they are nice and sharp. To finish the collar we're just going to hand stitch that opening shut. On the two sleeve pieces that are right sides together, cut inwards about 3 inches to get the cuff going. For a little bit of structural support, sew along the two sides of the cut. Take those little plaquette pieces and press it so that it looks like the one that's on the right, with the right side folded inwards a little bit. Pin the free edge of the plaquette to the slit that you just cut in the sleeve and sew them together along the top edge, right sides touching. Then bring that placket piece all the way around to hide all the raw edges and sew that down with the top stitch as well. Take that placket piece, fold it in half so that the sleeve looks like this, and then we're going to sew a little diagonal line into the top edge. Open up the placket and along the edge that is touching the long side of the sleeve, fold that one inwards and sew it down with a little stitch. Here's where you're at with your two sleeves. You've got two little plackets that fold outwards towards the big edge of the sleeve. Next, we're going to add some darts. I chose to go with three darts, so I just drew a couple of dots and the goal is to line up the dots and then sew a straight line three times to make the three darts. In the end, you want to make sure that the sleeve that you're left with can fit around your wrist comfortably. Here's how it looks with two darts done, I just have one more left to go. I sew a straight line from the top dot all the way down to the free edge. When all the darts are done, I do one more stitch along the free edge to make sure that they all lay in a certain direction. Now I can fold the sleeves right sides together and sew along the straight edge to seal off the tube. To make things easier to fit, I don't go all the way to the edge, that way I can adjust the diameter of the sleeve depending on how it fits with the shoulder. To add the cuff, simply pin the right side of the cuff fabric to the right side of the sleeves. Once those are sewn together along the free edge, make sure you press that raw seam so that it's pointing towards the cuff. Flip that cuff piece upwards and then pin that folded edge to the edge that you just sewed together. Try to line them up nice and flush. We're going to sew along the side for that front edge and also the back side of the cuff. Now you take the cuff piece and flip the entire thing inside out once more, pushing on those corners to make sure that they're nice and sharp. 
Start pinning that entire raw edge down to the sleeve and then we're going to sew that all together with a straight stitch. On the outside of the cuff we're also going to do a top stitch along all of the free sides to make sure they're nice and crisp. For now, pin those cuffs together instead of sewing on a button just because you want to get on with the fitting. Pin the right side of that sleeve to the right side of the shoulder and then try this on. It's likely that your sleeve might be a little bit long, so slide back as much as you need so that it hits your wrist nicely and then cut off the excess fabric that you slid back. Pin that sleeve back to the shirt so you can tell how much you need to seal off along the bottom edge and then with the right size touching, you're going to seal off the entire armhole attaching that sleeve to the shirt. To finish the front, fold those raw edges inwards about an inch and sew along the bottom. Then flip those inside out and push those corners really hard one more time to make sure they're really sharp. Then fold that word inwards twice and you can hem the entire bottom this way. The last step is just like with those pocket flaps, you're going to cut all of the buttonholes that you need, sew zigzags along those buttonholes and then attach a button to the other side of the fabric. 